Oh, I was relaxing. I was sitting on the couch playing Madden, my connected franchise mode. I was eating my old bay chips, just having a good Tuesday afternoon. Then I get this notification that the Ravens, they made some moves. Now, before we get into what those moves that the Ravens made, let's take you back to last night when it came out that Trace McSorley, he got signed off of the Ravens practice squad by the Arizona Cardinals. And of course, they got Kyler Murray, they got Colt McCoy, and whoever else they got there too. But they got Trace now. Uh, so that left a vacancy at backup quarterback for the Ravens. And the Ravens know, like, they, it, it's crazy because with Lamar Jackson, they don't end up missing him due to injuries, anything like that. No, they end up missing him due to sicknesses. So they, you, you, they can't just roll with two quarterbacks. They got to have a third quarterback on the roster. They got to have a backup guy. And once the, the Cardinals signed Trace McSorley last night, I said, oh, yeah, Kenji. Kenji. And any of y'all that follow us on Twitter already, y'all already knew this. We, we said it last night. Then we said it today. We said that, oh, is it time for the return of Kenji Bahar? And he's back. He's officially back. Uh, the Ravens have officially signed him to the practice squad to take the place of one Trace McSorley. Now, he, uh, of course, was with the Ravens throughout the offseason during training camp. Now, we knew he wasn't going to make the regular roster. Uh, we knew that the numbers just did not play in his favor because obviously Lamar was going to be a lock. And Tyler Huntley, he was a lock since last year. Uh, but he was sort of battling with Trace McSorley. But, you know, the Ravens, they would prefer Trace McSorley over any other third quarterback. So they were going to go with him. So there was just simply no room uh, for Kenji on the roster. But so, but as, as, as soon, and I'm sure it clicked for some of y'all too, but as soon as Trace McSorley got signed, it was like, it just made too much sense. Somebody who's familiar with the Ravens, who's been around the Ravens, who, who, who knows their offense and whatnot, and somebody who's available. So now he's back, officially. Uh, and, and that wasn't the only move um, that they made. Uh, they also signed a cornerback. Because, you know, on Sunday, Anthony Averett, he did not play. Jimmy Smith, he did not play. Um, and they've been down cornerbacks. Y'all already know it's, it's, it's been pretty rough. But they signed uh, Kevin Tolliver. Kevin Tolliver. So they got a Josh Oliver and a Kevin Tolliver. No relation. It just, I just thought of that. It's not important. But anyway, um, they also signed uh, Jared Jones Smith to the practice squad. So they made three practice squad signings today. And they also released Adrian Ely. The tackle. So Adrian Ely was somebody that a lot of um, Ravens fans felt had and showed a lot of promise and could potentially be somebody that was given an opportunity uh, if, if the chance came about. But I believe he had got suspended, but his suspension just ended. Uh, and the Ravens were like, uh, OK, yeah, we're done. Thank you, though. And there's always a chance that they could bring uh, anybody that they release, especially off the practice squad. There's always a chance that they could bring them back like a Le'Veon Bell. He cleared waivers. We, we haven't heard of anything with Le'Veon Bell since he got released. It's been quiet on Le'Veon Bell. And I, I did not think that he was going to get claimed. But, yeah, we heard nothing. Uh, but anyway, so it's, it's still possible that the Ravens be like, hey, you know what, Bell? Come on back, but yeah, that just, I, I, I think that ship sailed, especially when, when Harbaugh, when he said that uh, he's, he's probably going to get some other opportunities. He's gonna, I'm sure there's going to be some other opportunities for Le'Veon Bell, like as far as other teams and whatnot. Now, um, into even better news. Well, not even, even better news, but some news that's just as exciting, if not even more exciting. This Sunday night. The Ravens are going to be bringing the all-black unis to Sunday night football. It's going to be beautiful because the, 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 the black unis are nice. The all-blacks are nice. They, they are great. They're probably my favorites from the Ravens. They got some nice combinations. The purple and black is nice. The white uniforms with black pants is nice. Uh, the purple with the white is nice. Um, the, black, oh, the, the, black uni, the black uniforms with the white pants, oof. Those are so clean, too. Um, but anyway, it's all black this Sunday night against the Browns. And the Ravens actually literally just tweeted out 
just now, while I'm recording this video, they said Sunday night, anybody that's going to the game, be in your seats early and be a part of the game like never before. We're debuting interactive color changing bracelets. Okay, well, that should be cool. Uh, but anyway, so that it, it should be fun. Now, um, some news that came out yesterday, which is great, uh, is that the Ravens, they designated Malik Harrison to return from the uh, the non-football injury list. So if it works the same way as the uh, as the designating to return from injury reserve, then that would mean that he would have 21 days to practice, so he could practice for three weeks, uh, and then within those three weeks, he could be uh, he could return to the active roster. So as long as it works the same way, I'm pretty sure that it does work the same way as coming back from injury reserve. But either way, that's a beautiful thing because to know that Malik Harrison is officially back. That means he's all healed up. That means he'll be ready to go. He got just got to get back into football shape a bit. Um, and I'm sure he's been keeping in shape and whatnot, doing whatever workouts he can. Um, so that, that'll be nice just to get reloaded that much more. Uh, and it seems as if Ravens, hey... Hey, they're getting healthier later in the season. Because, yeah, for, it's like every time we get somebody back, we end up losing somebody else. But because we lost Pernell McPhee. We got back Ben Cleveland. We got back McCarry, but we lost Pernell McPhee. So he's out for at least the next three weeks. And, and Harbaugh said in yesterday's presser, which he definitely has some interesting things to say there. Um, but he did say with Pernell McPhee, he expects him to be back. Uh, he talked about Tavon Young, Anthony Averitt, that those are not long-term injuries. But again, as we know with John Harbaugh, as y'all know with John Harbaugh, as John Harbaugh knows with John Harbaugh, seeing is believing. So that's, that's why he don't speak on injuries too much. He don't try to get in all detailed and all that. No, he stays out of that. Uh, but anyway, with all linebackers, it's nice that because um, Josh Bynes and Patrick. Uh, oh, my goodness. I was about to say Patrick Onwasu. Patrick Queen. They've been doing a good job, especially Patrick Queen. He's been stepping it all the way up ever since he got demoted or moved over to the wheel linebacker spot, whatever you want to call it. Ever since that changeup happened, he's been playing a lot better. Why? What, why is that? Why that change? Because he's been put in a position to succeed. We had the, the, the video earlier today. About should the Ravens fire Wink? And there were some great points that so many people brought up in the comment section. And I appreciate y'all so much for that. Thank you for always bringing up great points. I appreciate it a lot. Um, but the thing, my thing is not even, I, I'm not even like, oh, fire Wink, fire Wink, fire Wink, get rid of him, da 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 da. But he has to put players in position. To succeed, you have to. You, you have to adjust. You do not have your normal personnel out there. You do not have all your normal playmakers out there. You do not have, you got so many players that are hurt. You have to put people in position to succeed. You got to. If somebody's struggling, you need to do what you can to get them help. Look at that. Patrick Queen this year. What happened with Patrick Queen this year? Oh my goodness. He was struggling. He was struggling big time. He would make some plays here and there. But he would certainly give up some plays and miss a lot of plays too. He was struggling. But what happened? The Ravens saw that. They, they said, hey, Josh Bynes. What's up, big head? And he literally got a big head. But he's smart. He's smart. But he said, what's up, Josh Bynes? What's up, big head? He picked up. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, Raven? Y'all need me back again? They like, yeah, we do. Okay, cool. All right, practice squad. Then boom, in no time, active roster. So they, they recognized the problem with Patrick Queen. One of their main focal points, playmakers, whatnot, the, the inside linebacker, the nucleus of the defense. So they, 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 they saw a problem, and they adjusted, and they put him in a better position to succeed. And look how it's worked. Now, if it's not asking too much, Ravens, if it's not asking too much, and I know there's going to be people, oh, well, Brandon Stevens was late on the blitz with that cover zero. The whole thing about Wink, my frustrations with Wink, 
it hasn't been. It, it's not just because of that one play. Because I think a lot of people fail to realize, and I, and I said that in the beginning of the video on purpose. Because you know some people, they, oh, no, nah, I'm not watching this video. I said it in the beginning. It's not an overreaction to that one game. It's not an overreaction at all. This is based off of patterns. Patterns. Now, again, I'm not like, oh, yeah, Raven should fire Wink. But something's got to give. Wink has got to adjust better. No, actually, he's got to adjust. I know, live by, die by, bliss. I already know. We know. But you, you're going to die a lot quicker than you live if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you see it's not working. You don't have the personnel to do what you normally do. You don't have the personnel to keep putting all these guys on islands. If your best cornerback has struggled this year on those islands, what makes you think every single person that comes after him is not going to struggle? And all of them have. All of them have. But he keeps putting them on islands. Got to adjust. Giro. <laughs> we, we have plenty of conversation. And, and that's, that's the Ravens' biggest problem right now. They, 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 as coordinators, as coaches. And it's, it's Harbaugh too. All of them are involved in this thing. They have got to adjust better and faster. They have to. Yes, you got an offensive coordinator that needs to do better adjusting. You got a defensive coordinator that do, needs to do better adjusting. You got a head coach that needs to step in and let them know. Make sure that they adjust better and quicker. Because, again, Browns, this. Uh, I, I hate having to go over the schedule over and over again, but I have to because it only gets tougher. Browns twice, Steelers twice, Bengals once, Packers, Rams. Look, none are easy games. So this is why so many of us, especially myself, have, despite the Ravens being what? Seven and three. Nice record. I love it. But despite the Ravens being seven and three, this is why I have continued to, to beat that same drum. To beat that living horse, because it's not a dead horse. Beat that living horse, because it's something that has continued to happen all throughout this season. Ravens are squeaking by. But you do that funny business against the wrong team, you ain't going to be squeaking by no more, my friends. You're not. So, again, as far as firing, no, nah, nobody got to get fired, but they need to adjust. But that's the thing. We've been seeing this for so long. Will they adjust? Hey, we're going to find out real soon. Starting this Sunday, again, when the competition goes up. It goes up. Browns are fighting for, for a lot more than the Bears are. And the Browns know the Ravens much better than the Bears do. Play these guys twice a year. And then, see, this is how, you, this is how you're definitely going to be able to see if those adjustments are being made or not. Because and, <laughs> if you don't adjust, things will get exposed really fast. We play the Browns this Sunday night. We played them this Sunday night. Then we play the Steelers, and then we turn right back around and play the Browns again in two weeks. Two weeks from this Sunday night, we play the Browns again. So you're going to have to have a good game plan for this Sunday against the Browns. But then, if and I, I expect it to be a really close game. I don't expect no blowout. I, I, I expect a normal stressful Ravens game like they all are. But anyway, we'll talk about that game when we talk about that game. If the Browns, they see something that you do, if they pick, on, put, pick up on some tendencies and whatnot, they got a bye week. So they got a bye week to put some extra work in and be like, oh, okay, this is what the Ravens like to do. Oh, so you are going to be forced to adjust. And if you don't, <laughs> so we'll be watching extra heavy. And the Browns will be watching extra heavy to see if those adjustments are made. So anyway, Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And... Just like I hope the days of the Ravens not adjusting are, I'm out.